Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the second episode of Unpacking the Homily. Today, I'm with Father Cam, and we're going to dive a little bit deeper into um, our Fully Love Homily series. How are you doing today, Cam? I'm doing pretty well. Um, had a good morning. Um, and yeah, excited to, to dig a little deeper into this cool series that we've been opening up on Sundays. Mm. I think we're really going to enjoy um, this conversation with you. Um, in the office, we have anointed you with a nickname. It's Camelango. And the reason is you're so packed with um, information and wisdom. You've got like Vatican vibes is what we, what we say. So I, I think the audience is really going to appreciate this time with you. I'll try and be as wise as I can. Yeah. Try hard. No, no, I'm kidding. Um, can you start us off by um, recapping a little bit about the the two homilies that we've covered? Yeah, so the Sunday before last, Father Dan kicked off our series called Fully Love um, by basically just introducing the fact that what we're made for as human beings is to love. The whole point of our lives is to love. That's the thing that is our purpose and our goal. That's why God has created us. He was talking about the reality of marriage and how that's a, a sign of God's love written into our humanity. He was talking about some of the saints and the way that they've given their lives in love. Um, and it's really a way when we discover loving fully, we discover who we, who we really are. And Dan began the series really by challenging us not to just kind of recognize that as a fact, take it as given, um, but to decide that that would be the point of our lives and kind of take hold of love as the purpose why we want to live. And the whole rest of the series is about unpacking how we do that because Christianity isn't just about kind of turning up to sit in a pew at a church or getting a halo sort of thing, but it's actually about transforming ourselves so that we can love fully. And that's not only in our relationship with God, but that's in our, all of our relationships day to day, mm -hmm. um, how we love one another. So how do we become fully loved? That's what the whole series is about. And last week uh, in my homily, I was unpacking one particular aspect of how we do that and how self-awareness is key to our, our capacity to love and particularly what blocks us from loving. Yeah, yeah, I found that quite interesting, um, that angle, um, self-awareness. Um, before we get into that, one thing um, I, I s stumbled on as they were reading the, the gospel, um, and it was about the, the wealthy guy, right, the wealthy dude that could not um, part with his stuff mm. to pursue Jesus you know and I, and as they're reading that out and as the homily started I was thinking wait is that what Father Cam did like um you know when you became a priest and then I started to think like what about me how like you know I don't I'm not radical that way like how do I pursue Jesus if I'm not a priest that's a really really good question and it, it can be easy to look at religious or priests or and even look at the saints and say oh they did it in a radical way but that's you know i'm not that radical or i'm not that holy or whatever but the i suppose father dan and myself as religious brothers and priests we we take a particularly a radical expression of what god is calling us to so we take the vows of poverty chastity and obedience um in a radical way in our way of life so that means we actually give up our possessions uh, and with, with celibates, we give up that human relationship and we give up our freedom to follow where, our, um, where the church asks us to go. So whereas we do that in a radical and a literal way, that's still the call placed upon every Christian's life. And it might not mean kind of giving up all of your money might be a, a reckless and silly thing to do if you've got a family to provide for. Yeah. Uh, but still, God asks us all to, to be detached from that. And that's what I was talking about, that the rich man couldn't respond because 
his wealth had a hold of him. Um, he wasn't prepared to let go of his money and his wealth to follow Jesus. And that can happen to us who have already kind of given away all of our possessions, even just as it can happen to someone with lots of money. Um, and a very everyday example I thought of that I, this isn't a very priestly thing as I share it, so I'm sure you can relate. We can be attached to like our own private time or even if you have very few possessions, you can be very attached to it. And I recognized last week there was, um, it was after dinner and I'd cooked dinner and used the frying pan. And then I'd washed up some of my dishes and Father Dan had dinner after that. And he'd washed up some of his dishes. And later in the night, Dan was on a meeting or something busy. And I walked through the kitchen and I was going off to kind of have my own relaxed time of the evening. And I was keen for that. But I saw the frying pan sitting on the stove that Dan had used after me. So therefore it wasn't my responsibility. And I was like, no, I'm not gonna wash that. I'm gonna go and have my, my relaxed time because it's evening, but I'm ready to relax. But I recognized that and was like, oh, maybe I should actually be loving in this case. So I let go of those two minutes that it took to wash the fry pan mm. um, and generously wash the fry pan. So yeah. like, that's, that's just the way that we can be, we can cling to whether it's our time or our comforts or our wealth or even relationships can, we can mm. be attached to that in a particular way. But, mm. and that looks different in each of our lives, but I'm sure you can all relate to not wanting to wash a frying pan. Now that, that makes sense. That's good. Because I thought after the homily, I was like, man, do I have to go and set up a Gumtree account and now sell all my stuff? <laughs> this way is better. This one sounds better. But yeah. Um, you also talked about self-awareness. I think that was the overarching theme. Would you like to um, tell us a little bit about, maybe give us an example of something that you have, um, you know, notice within yourselves or what kind of methodology do you use to self-reflect? Mm -hmm. Well, like that example of the frying pan, which mm -hmm. I'll come back to is, like, that was a moment of self-awareness. I could have just kind of, I had, I had the desire to go off to my room and enjoy the evening in whatever way I was doing that. And I could have just gone with that, but I was able to, in that moment, recognize, oh wait, no, I'm, I'm not able to respond to the, the opportunity to love and wash the frying pan, to love my brother, because I'm attached to this thing. It was only because I could see those competing values within myself. And I saw that I actually, that's a loving thing and that's a selfish thing. So I responded in that way. Whereas, mm. yeah, we can easily just go with kind of where that feeling pushes us in the moment. Um, yeah, there's a thousand other examples of that um yeah and it, in in being able to take stock of it we can actually make a decision then whereas if if we're not aware of the way the desire is pulling us then then the desires or the feelings will have control over us and yeah. you know, otherwise i couldn't have made a decision oh, okay i'm actually going to do a loving thing here um does that make some sense yeah yeah. yeah, you. I think you also mentioned um, allowing, sitting with God and allowing Him to show show you yourself. You know, yeah. is is there a um, how do you do that? Like, yeah, yeah, that's a really good question. I, I mentioned the examine as one way of doing that, and really the point of any practice of self awareness, like like the examine, is that like as we do that at the end of the day and look back on the moments the, the point of it will be that we become aware in the moment by mm -hmm. going back over the moments of our day at the end of the day we're going to grow in the habit of noticing things and we're going to notice it when it's actually happening um but another in-depth way that I've, I've used in my prayer for many years is i call it attention to experience um i've particularly learned this under father tony chick who was previous parish priest here um, and it's simply a way where we can prayerfully take an experience that we've had, um, say, you know, that conversation you had with someone or that, you know, moment when you got angry in the car, you can go back and remember the experience and just pay attention 
to what was happening. And the, the difficult part of it is that you're supposed to, um, the point of it is to just observe what's going on within yourself and not analyze mm. it. We always want to find the answers and analyze what's going on and understand it and fix the problem. Whereas this uh, paying attention to the experience is about just noticing what's going on within yourself. So you can just imagine the experience that you've had, remember it and go through and say, okay, I was feeling this or this thought went through my mind or I, my whole body became tense. And I was like, you know, we, the, the bodily sensations that go along with that you can notice. And as I do the experience, as I do this exercise with the past experience, I would follow kind of where my attention leads me, which I see is the way that God wants to reveal the experience to me. And he'll kind of make something stand out to my mind, which might not make sense, but I'll pay attention to that and go a little bit deeper. And then in seeing, you know, it might connect to other memories or things. It, it's just opening up what's going on within ourselves. Because in, in random little moments, there's all of our past experiences are feeding into that. All of our values are feeding into that. Our emotions. Yeah. Into that. We're very complex beings. Um, mm. And one, one example that, that sticks out to me of doing that kind of experience, and this, is, this isn't about kind of the, being aware of blockages to love, this was actually about receiving love from another person. And I'd, I'd had, this was at uni, and I was, when I was studying my theology, I was coming up to the end of my time, and I was sitting in the library studying, and a guy had come over and just kind of affirmed me. And, you know, we weren't close friends, but we had a bit of association over a few years. And he just kind of said, oh, thanks for your, you know, presence and contribution around, around the college. Um, but he was a rather awkward fellow. And it was a really awkward exchange. He was just kind of trying to say the nice thing. And I was sitting there, just, oh, um, thank you. <laughs> As, you know, things like that can be awkward. Yeah. And that stuck in my mind, and particularly the awkwardness of it. So I went back in my prayer, paid attention to it, and was like, as I looked at the awkwardness of listening to him saying what he was saying, I was like, there's something really genuine about that I felt in it. And I, like the, the way that my imagination kind of revealed that, it was like he, his, his kind of genuine desire to really affirm me and show me that love was like he kind of reached into my heart and reached into my yeah. chest and held my heart tenderly, which I think, that just kind of showed me how profound a, a, a simple little moment of love like that can be on that human level. We have little chats like that, you know, everywhere throughout our day, but it's actually a deep connection between our spirits. And I wasn't able to see that on the, the awkward surface level of the conversation. Right, during the conversation. Mm. But in going back to it in that way and paying attention to what was going on and letting God reveal it, I was able to say, oh my goodness, this was a, a beautiful moment of connection with my brother. Mm. Mm. So was it at first hard to receive? And then later on, through reflection, it was nice to receive? It... Yeah, like I received it at the time. It was just, mm. you know, okay. when I went on about it, but because it stuck in my mind, it was like after, after seeing that, it was suddenly wondrous and awesome and something that praise God yeah. about. Um, yeah. So okay. this, the self-awareness is not only key to understand our brokenness and our, what blocks us from loving, but self-awareness can actually help us to discover the beauty of loving other people in that sort of way. We can discover that just kind of offering someone a hand or saying a nice word to someone isn't mm -hmm. just, it's, it's not as simple as we think because we're, we're engaging with the spirit and connecting with people on a profound level that we just don't see in our daily life. And by these kind of experiences, these kind of exercises, we can become aware of that far more profound, far more beautiful reality. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, brings me to think about this as well. Um, you know, I think the whole thing about self-awareness <clears throat> um, can lead us to to really knowing ourselves and knowing perhaps how God also sees us um, mm. and in that you know um, 
that relationship, I don't know, grows from that space. Do, do personality tests help? You know, if we use it as a tool to, mm -hmm. to figure ourselves out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another, another again, aspect of self-awareness and how it helps us to love is to discover the uniqueness of who we are. The Because, um, you know, I love, well, even, you know, I try and love the community as a priest, but I do that in a different way to how Father Dan does it. You know, mm. you, Steph, try and love your kids, but you would do that in a different way to how Dion does your right. husband. Um, because we're all different and we, we bring our experiences, we bring our personality, we bring our God-given gifts to these, these roles and these tasks that we play, that we do. Um, so God also wants to reveal who we are in our uniqueness and how he's calling us to love. So things like personality tests, and there's, there's a number of different ones out there or other different ways we can discover our gifts and the way that we work, that can be a really helpful thing um, to discover who we are. I, I recently did one and as I was kind of reading through the feedback of what it said that this kind of person does, it was really, really um, helpful to me understand, understanding how I tend to build relationships and how I mm. see in others and how I struggle with that as well. So that, that, can, that can build us up in both ways, you know, discovering our strengths and also discovering our weaknesses and how we might need to grow. Mm. Um, and I've also done similar tests like that, that I've looked at the results and gone like, eh, yeah, no, nah, that doesn't mean much to me and I've passed it on. So they can be helpful for some of us. They might not be, but um, definitely. Right. Have you done some personality tests like that, Steph? And you I like have, I have. Um, my favorite one is the Enneagram. I know there's a lot of like um, thoughts out there on that, but um, I found that it was, I wouldn't say the most accurate, but it was the one that really, really brought me to face um, myself, you know, mm -hmm. really, really see myself. Like I was looking at a mirror and I was just like, oh, some bits I just don't want to, to, to look at and other bits, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, that really is me. Um, and I have um, used it to, to grow mm -hmm. from it, you know, to yeah to be a better person um so yeah, yeah awesome. that's something i would recommend mm. people but mm. the these these seemingly secular tools can still be very very helpful for us and even the the attention to experience thing that i was talking about is actually very close to what people would call mindfulness exercises um mm. which, which we might think is kind of new age whatever but the reason that things like that are so popular and they seem to be so fruitful in people's lives is because it's reflecting something of how God wants us to be, to be in touch with ourselves um, as he's made us to be and as he calls us to be in each moment. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been really good, um, Father Cam. I think um, the Kamalango has, has come through. <laughs> um, Looking forward to, to the rest of the series. Is, mm. is there any last um, thoughts that you, you might want to share with us? Or Well, I just wanted to say, talking about that, like our own personal uniqueness and how that comes out, um, how that comes to life in the way that we love, um, that's something of what Dan's going to be talking to this coming Sunday. So mm. I encourage you all to, to tune into Mass, check it out. Um, and for the next few weeks, um, there's so much more to unpack of, of what it means for us to love, not only to, to do loving things, but to become fully loved. It's a really exciting series. Yeah, it is. It really is. Very, um, very close to the heart and, and mm. practical in many ways. Yeah. Well, thank you. And um, have a good rest of your day. Thanks, Steph. Thanks for the no questions in the chat. Um, Thanks, everyone. Oh, cool. See you later. Bye.